Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Let's Play Morrowind, The Elder Scrolls 3 TM. But previously, we were in the Aldruin Guild of Mages. We've been running around doing Mages Guild stuff while also trying to somehow scrape a living in the process, because we're constantly impoverished as Sally. Uh, aren't we? Yep, 141 gold is the grand total of what we got right now. Can hardly afford a, afford a bus fare these days. Our current quest is to go to the Mages Guild in Vivek and steal the book Chimava Midium from, uh, from a High Elf lady who's there and bring it back to Edwina. That's the current thing on the to-do list, aside from the fact that we also need to do the Puzzle Canal pilgrimage thing in Vivek. Uh, but we can't do that until we get our hands on a Silver Longsword. Uh, someone mentioned last time that the supply chests don't refill until you empty them. I think the one in Balmora is only... I, I don't know if that's still the case with Rebirth is the thing. I know that's the case in Vanilla, but I don't think it's the case in Rebirth because we're gonna, we're, we'll do a little science experiment. This one I've emptied. The one in Balmora is, is, uh, is half empty. I took the potions out and left everything else in there. We'll see if both of them respawn. Anyway, I'm going to have a I, We can't afford it right now, I don't think. But I want to have a little look around our uh, Alderaan right now and see if there's anybody here that will sell us a silver longsword. I think there's a smith in the fighters guild here. There's also a smith up near Scar. I just want to see if I can... Maybe get a better deal with these guys, I don't know. Do you have a silver longsword, sir? I know there's a there's a smith in Balmora who in vanilla definitely has a silver longsword. You don't have one, do you? You do have a helm of iron will. But you don't have a silver longsword. this place again? Round the pot, yeah. Apparently it's a bit chilly out because our breath is fogging. You look at the oh, you look yeah, at the yeah. old what is his helmet? That's weird. Um you look around at the Ashways and you don't automatically think to yourself, do you oh yeah, it must be really cold. But it is. Smith up here. Guessing Rebirth removed the chest full of silver longswords next to the Daedra. It may have done, but I am choosing not to cheese the game by you by by knowing that the the chest is there. I'm trying to I'm trying to do the quest as if it's my first time ever doing it, and therefore I'm going to acquire a silver longsword the proper way as the design is intended rather than cheesing it and just taking one out of the chest, giving it to the Dramora so he can put it back in the chest again. Because that's not really the intent there, I think, behind the quest design. That's not really what you're supposed to be doing. He's got a silver short sword. Which is just... Tragic, honestly. <laughs> I don't think there's a smith... Uh, uh, there might be a Redoran Smith, actually, in there. Let's have a look. We're going to do the qu Temple Quest, folks. We're going to do them fecking properly. And that includes buying a Silver Longsword the old-fashioned way. But as a new pilgrim, we're not gonna. There's even even if as a as I said, even if there is a chest with the swords in it there, which there isn't vanilla. As a new pilgrim, we don't know that. You know, nobody has told us. Oh, you don't actually need to bring a sword. There's one in the chest next to the Dramora. 
nobody's told us that. So as far as Sally's concerned, it's like, okay, I need to go find myself a silver longsword, just like I've gone and found myself, you know, all of the other items needed for all the other pilgrimages. This is just the same as those. I gotta go find myself a little silver longsword. Are you not the smith? Or, oh, you. You who I need to speak to. You do have a silver longsword for 160 septims. You also have a glass war axe, which is pretty sweet. A whole bunch of other nice armor as well. Bone mold and whatnot. Oh, it makes me wish I was playing a red around character. Best great house. 2k24. We'll die on that hill. Red house red around a are based. <laughs> they're the best. They're the best great house. Wish their HQ was a bit easier to navigate, though. There we go. Out this way. What is it, Outlander? Do they even own farm tools, though? They don't, and that's exactly why they're based. They don't need any goddamn slaves. They think it makes them weak if they don't do the work themselves. That how is that not based as fuck? Come on. Red Arena just hardcore like that, you know? Do I have any slaves? What do I look like? Some lazy fat halalu to you? Do I have any slaves? Do I fuck? <laughs> Stupid Enwa. Back in my day, if I wanted a house, I killed a giant crab and lived in its shell. <laughs> uh. Okay, well, we know where to get a silver longsword now. We just need the money for it. There's the pop. That's the difficult bit. I could sell this amulet of slow falling. It is relatively valuable, but I've been holding on to it because I want to use it in conjunction with the scroll of a carrion flight. But I can just make a really shitty crap uh, slow fall spell instead. So I think I'm going to sell this. Do you only need like 20 gold to afford it? Yeah, but I need also need dosh left over, JB, so I can afford things like fast travel. Like, we need, still need to get to Vivek, remember? And back again. I special prices just for you today. I think I give me 154 at the skin flint. Oh, we have a lesser soldier. Does it have, like, a... No, it doesn't have a soul in it, does it? Um, I'm going to get rid of a couple, a few of those. A few. I, I, I do want to keep the petty soul gems just for practice, because um, apparently we're going to be so strapped for cash in this playthrough that we may actually want to have a go at enchanting. Oh, by the way, I did some off-screen playing around, and I have officially now figured out pretty much how um, the fishing works and also how the painting works. Uh, so... I need an easel, is the main thing. I need an easel, and I need writing implements. Writing, painting, drawing, whatever implements. Uh, the easiest thing would be to get some charcoal sticks. I don't know if I can craft charcoal sticks out of charcoal. It seems like I should be able to do that, but I'm not... I, I didn't see an option for it when I entered the crafting menu last time. But um, we would need, at the bare minimum, some charcoal sticks and an easel and some paper. That's all kind of expensive, though, when you tot it up entirely. There's also stuff like here, like palettes for oil paints and watercolors, and then you got the, you have to buy the pigment separately to refill the palette, because as you can see there, it says use is zero out of 15. Uh, and then you can buy frames to frame your the stuff that you've done on canvases once it's done and stuff. And I absolutely want to do this with Sally. I, I, I envision 
in my head that Sally is a very artistic soul. And I want her to be doing lots and lots of painting and drawing and stuff. You can also make your own pigments. Yeah, you can, can't you? With like plant bits and stuff. It's, it's kind of easier just to buy them though. Like the pigments are like one gold each for after all. So we also need to get camping gear at some point. You know, like we need to get. Uh... Oh, it's a sketchbook. I didn't notice that. <gasps> oh, I need to give that a try. And a reed pen. Presumably, you have to buy an ink well as well or something. You need to get you need to get some ink to go with the pen. He's got that for sale. There's a quill pen there. Um, also, there's lures for we need we need for fishing. We've already got a fishing rod. Uh, so there's a shiny lure. Bug shell spinner. What's the cheapest like thing he's got available? Well, they're twenty five. The silver lure is a bit more expensive. I'm going to I'm going to take this bug shell spinner. We can do a bit of fishing maybe grind out a little bit of money doing that actually there's a warp skin available as well actually that's good to know but yeah but there's all sorts of other stuff we need to get our hands on you know like a tent uh for instance a teapot would be nice um some sort of cooking pot there's, oh, there's so much there's so many things we need so many things. Backpack wouldn't hurt either, actually. Although carrying capacity like encumbrance is not a huge issue for Sally because she wears no armor and uses no weapons. So her carry capacity is not being used up nearly as much as a normal character's would. A natural leather backpack, backpack would be kind of nice though. It's just it's 80 gold on top of everything else we need to buy. It's like, ugh. else we can get rid of we've got these on deuces and hinging scrolls which i'm going to keep because they're going to be useful there's all these i keep picking up from the chests scroll low quality these are for enchanting and i, I kind of want to keep them for practice like they're, they're perfect for enchanting practice you know get rid of some of this charcoal oopsie daisy some of that back please uh i want the coat of flowers as well for alchemy don't even have alchemy equipment we don't even have alchemy equipment we are actually just a totally impoverished peasant right now and i love it <laughs> i love being poor in an rpg as long as it's an rpg i know relatively well like and i, and I know how to make money uh it sucks when you're playing an RPG for the first time and you have no idea what you're doing and you're constantly poor because it's just like, oh my god, this feels this feels so, so crushingly hard. But uh, in a game like Moran, which I know very, very intimately well, I love this. I love the fact that I got no goddamn money. And also I'm playing, I'm role-playing a character who is like, you know, pretty much lawful good as well, so I can't just go steal shit. Get rid of some of these stones as well. Uh, just throwing junk at him and hoping he'll buy it. I wish I could do that in real life. You know, just pick up a bunch of random rocks and then take them to the local, uh, you know, convenience store and just be like, here, take these stones. <laughs> I would like six dollars for these stones, please. <sighs> being poor in Kenshi. Ah, oh, yes. That's a perfect example. Kenshi, that's a game I've tried and bounced off many times. Could not figure out what to do other than repeatedly mine endless quantities of ore, which was extremely boring. Okay, that's giving me a bit of extra money. 308. We can now go and buy ourselves a silver longsword. Trent Kenshi's get beaten up a lot. I know. I oh, know. It's not very exciting, though. Kenshi's weird because it's a game that I like in theory, but actually, when I get around to playing it, I don't have an awful lot of fun. 
I watched a really cool, like, big review, uh, sort of play, th you know, condensed let's play playthrough thing of Kenshi, and no, actually, it wasn't a Warlock -Wall Ocracy one, in case anyone asks. I forget the name of the channel. It was quite good, though. And it got me all, like, jazzed up, like, okay, Kenshi looks really inter really interesting. I should give this another go, and I, I did. And I spent, like, two hours mining ore and getting beaten up and just sitting there thinking, you know what, this is not as much fun as I thought it would be. <laughs> No, it's a trader. We need the smith. Hello! I require your silver longsword. I'm going to try and barter you down a bit for it. Oh, I got away with that. I don't believe it. Right. Can't just trade bent tin cans for useful things. Mm hmm. Lost again. Council entrance up this way. I should probably be casting charm on merchants before I, uh, before I barter with them, I suppose. Get ourselves teleported over to Vivek. My patience. He's limited. While we're in Vivek, I suppose we could do a spot of fishing. At least, you know, find ourselves some dinner. <coughs> Vivek, Guild of Mages. Alright. Now. The lady who has the book isn't here. Now I wonder if anything's changed with Rebirth to make this quest more difficult. Do you want some? Or is it just the same as before? It, hmm, kind of. Oh, the, I don't recall whether or not the door was locked in vanilla. Do you uh, happen to have a copy of Chimava Midian by any chance also? I'm going to wait. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna wait till my fatigue comes back before I attempt this this spell. I actually started a dagger for a character who is a paladin with high etiquette. Got a mod where it is manual, and it's nice to play as someone who isn't killing everyone on sight. How does that work? You just wander into a dungeon and and politely introduce yourself, and the monsters don't attack you. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Oh man, still, still only a 43% chance to cast. Our illusion sucks, apparently. Oh, it's only 20. How dare you walk away just as I'm about to cast the spell? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. There we go. Well, I've never heard of such a book. Oh, is you going to play? Make it, make you going to, we're going to have to do this the hard way, are we? Good thing I have this scroll, huh? Uh, do, 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 do. <sighs> yeah, this is definitely harder than vanilla. In vanilla, it's super easy to do this. You just walk straight in, pick the book up, you open the door, pick the book off the shelf. Door wasn't locked in vanilla. Yeah, it's not, is it? You walk in, open the door, close it behind you, get the thing, walk back out again. It's super, super easy. Arguably, maybe a little too easy, but. Uh... have any kind of 
spell will help me here. I don't have any chameleon or, or invisibility or anything. Although she did give me a potion of shadow, didn't she? Uh-huh. 120 gold. Would have preferred to sell that, but let's try that. That has made no fucking difference at all. I do not see the stealth icon. Is our stealth really that shockingly bad? That I, even if I stand behind her in the corner, I still am not able to stealth? Wow. Bloody hell. Apparently Rebirth doesn't mess around when it comes to sneak. If you've got a sneak of five, that means you're basically never sneaking in Rebirth, it seems. Do you want something? Okay, I can confirm stealth does technically work. The icon is there if I'm out here. All right, then. I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you face this way. You face... Fucking hell. If I can just get out of line of sight. <gasps> Here we go. Now we're in business. Heck yeah. Right. Stealth in Morrowind is so goddamn goofy, man. Oh, well, you're fucking joking. The chest is locked as well. Right now I've got more than one scroll, so we'll have to hope this works. Okay. Brilliant. Shimar Vermidium acquired. Breathing water. Having that as well while I'm at it, frankly. Uh. Sorry, that's my spite, personal spite as a player talking, not my character talking. My character would not take the other book. Because Sally's a, a good person and she doesn't like the fact that she's had to do this in the first place. But the spiteful player... Behind the controls really wanted to take that book as compensation for the bullshit. You know what, we'll not go back to Old Rune just yet. We'll go to the Puzzle Canal and do that before we head back. Right. Just another lovely, cold, wet, miserable day in Vivek. Not committing petty theft without reason is lawful stupid, apparently so. <laughs> According to some people. Personally, I think that's just good old-fashioned lawful good. But... D&D has rotted some people's brains. Ooh, I forgot about these funky teleporter thingies. This is pretty neat. like it puts the gondoliers out of a job though <laughs> I suppose it depends on whether or not you want to climb all the way up to the upper level to use them oh yeah you mean like this classic I don't know if it's going to work but theoretically you can do it in such a way that you can you don't take any fall damage there you go like that
Right then, puzzle canal time. Long sword acquired. Speed has been drained by something. Oh, we're chilly. Okay. It's a bit cold. It's a, it's a miser. It's an absolutely miserable day on Bardenfell today, isn't it? Clearly. It's funny. There's no. There's no convenient way in here, even though it's a pilgrimage site. Let me in! Curse you, knee-high obstacle! Must I stand here and train my acrobatics until I can finally make the jump? Okay, I'm sorry, this is bullshit. I should be able to climb over this. There we go. Center. It's almost like I've played this game before. Okay, hold on. This isn't here normally. What's going on here? Interesting. Well, is there something else I need to go and do else in the pu in the puzzle canal to switch that off? <laughs> I sense more rebirth fuckery. We interrupt this puzzle canal to bring you more rat punching. Okay. So in Vanilla, there's only one way, correct way into the center of the puzzle canal. Which is the way that I just went in. However, in Vanilla, there is not a force field blocking you from entering the next bit when you get through. Hands increasing. How are you missing an unconscious rat? I don't know. Gotcha. Okay, so there's no there's no entrance here. rats.
got a comfortable, oh, am I really? Level four. Such a dignified pilgrimage. Nobody said it would be easy. Average pilgrim by the time they finish the pilgrimage of the seven graces has, has, has the training and fitness of a navy seal. I mean, <laughs> it's insane. We haven't even done the most dangerous ones yet. The temple apparently doesn't accept just anyone into their ranks. They're looking for the best. Well, it's not really a sewer, Green Tate, though. It's the Puzzle Canal. I'm pretty sure Vivek doesn't have a toilet up there. every rat in the entire puzzle canal. Oh, Spot, I'm sorry, dude. Your, your, uh, your, your chat message got caught by the auto mod. I don't think I think I don't think any of the moderators are doing anything with it, so Hey mods! Do your fucking job. I mean <clears throat> what? There we go. Alright, well, I don't know what we're supposed to do then, because I've pretty much explored every level of the canal now, I think. Maybe you just need to do what you need to do in vanilla. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming maybe that's the case, but... In vanilla, you only know what you're supposed to do because you were told it by the trialith on the platform inside. So, without that trialith, which is up there, there's no way to know what you're supposed to do in a situation like this. Enough, it doesn't mention anything about it in the book. Like someone at the temple, I guess we could. Just gonna read a book while up to my neck in water, yep. Video games! <laughs> Using the scroll of a carrion flight. 
there anything to explore around this way? We're doing the puzzle canal, yes, but with there's a bit of been a bit of an added complication because rebirth has changed the way it works a little bit, and I'm not entirely sure how to proceed. It's giving me a lot of nostalgia though, getting stuck at the puzzle canal again, like it's 2003. I'm going to just go ahead and TCL myself up here. There we go. Is there anyone out here to talk to? chat with one of the ordinators, I suppose. Fade, law, and justice. Walk on. Fade, law, justice. Found that puzzle canal. There's no, there's no dialogue topic for it. Palace of Vivek. Hello. Do you know anything about the puzzle canal? I'm sure puzzle canal normally is actually a dialogue topic. There, puzzle canal. Many choice treasures are guarded by Daedric servants in the puzzle canal's dark passages. See, that's not... That's actually not true. Um, that's not even slightly true, game. It wasn't true in vanilla, and if that's vanilla dialogue, which I suspect it is, um, makes me think that maybe the puzzle canal was supposed to be something a bit more interesting originally, but it Go got ahead. cut for development time. What do you need? Yeah, he doesn't have anything new to say about it either. All right, well, I guess we'll go back and we'll try. to talk about this lady. Weird. Is there something she does barter and sell, sell spells, though. <gasps> she does bargain rising force? Ah, oh, I wasted my money on the on the expensive one inside. I could have just bought that. Oh, she sells Amsubi Intervention. That's good to know. I'll need that at some point also restore attribute spells also really good to know like restore strength particularly It's level three, I think. Never played Mar Mario before. Should, can I go with a modded run first, or should you go vanilla? Uh, I would probably suggest vanilla. In fact, I would definitely suggest vanilla. I'd still play vanilla Morrowind. Um, if you're if you're coming to it from other Bethesda games, where the general assumption is that the game is only better with mods. It's not quite the same with Morrowind. Morrowind is actually a perfectly good game vanilla. Like, if you're anything like me, and when you sit down and play Skyrim or Oblivion or Fallout or uh, or even Starfield these days, and you're like, I, I, I need mods to enjoy this game these days, 
That's not the case for Morrowind. I still, I have like vanilla Morrowind installed on my Steam Deck and I still happily play that over modded. So, I honestly would recommend vanilla first. Right, so I'm gonna see if this works because I've run out of I've run out of ideas at this point. And if this works as I think it it's it might, I'm gonna be kind of pissed to be honest. I'm gonna be kind of annoyed. You can go ahead and install some graphics mods if you want to. Oh my god. Okay, Rebirth, this is the first thing you've done that I genuinely dislike. Allow me to explain why in a moment. Um, yeah, you can play vanilla. Maybe if you really want to install install some graphics mods. Um, alternatively, you can use OpenMW, which is basically vanilla Morrowind, but, you know, on a newer open source engine. Which is kind of nice. Um... And also, you, you could potentially install Tamriel Rebuilt if you want to. When you feel like it, you know, mid-playthrough, once you've explored a fair chunk of, of Vardenfell, you can be like, okay, I want some more, and install in, in Tamriel Rebuilt. Because that's pretty much what I have on my Steam Deck at the moment. I have a, an almost vanilla install on my Steam Deck. I just have the vanilla game and Tamriel Rebuilt and nothing else on my Steam Deck, and it's darn good. So, the way this works, the original, yeah, maybe there, maybe there's something bugged out, maybe. The way this works is when you do this in vanilla, you come in, swim around there, you climb up the steps here, and there is no bridge. Right here, there's no bridge. You walk over here to this trilith, and it says, breathe the waters of his glory in the ways made clear. The hint there being you should go and drown yourself, and when you do, your health is restored. There's a crack of thunder. This bridge magically appears. And this hole over here, which previously, when you come in first, uh, at first has a force field over it, the force field disappears and you can go up here. However, either because of a bug or whether it was intentional, there was a force field over the lower entryway there and I couldn't get past it until drowning myself with no, without the hint from the trilith. So... Like, it makes absolutely no sense to, to edit it to work like that. So I'm well, going to be charitable and say maybe that's a bug. Maybe something's gone wrong with the force field and it actually is extends through the floor and down to the bottom there. Because otherwise, if you come in here and you can't get to the trilith, you have no idea how to get rid of the force field. Because then you don't have the hint on the trilith to do it, so... That is, for me, a rare Rebirth L. That entire encounter there. Lo love this mod to bits for the most part, but that, that was some bullshit. All right, here we go. Here's Krasit. Oh, the chest is trapped. I want to see how badly it's trapped. Okay, it's pretty minor, as far as I can tell. Well, it depends, actually. How long is this spell going to last? Curse of the Disrespectful. Fire damage, one point. But for how long? I'm gonna, I am gonna. want to sit here and wait. Because this, this is good. This, uh, this I like. This is for everyone who is saying, Oh, you should just get the Silver Longsword out of the chest. In Rebirth, they thought ahead of that. They were like, everybody, every, they were like, every time someone does this quest, they just grab the silver longsword out of the chest, which is not what you're supposed to do. So, we're gonna add the curse of the disrespectful to it. Of course, it is just a trap, so you could disarm it if you had a probe. But I like it. It's a cheeky little, it's a cheeky little middle finger to people who who, who are veterans of this game and they want to cheese this quest by not getting the silver longsword beforehand. Yeah, it seems like this it seems like this curse lasts for like a very long time. <laughs> I love it. Right. 
Let's reload. Oh, fuck's sake. What am I doing? Dumbass. Right. Krasit. My man. Are you here on the pilgrimage? I take it that silver longsword is for me. As you see, I am unarmed, but you are brave and gallant. <sighs> Will you give me your longsword so that I may stand a chance against your might? Yes, take it. Yes, I accept this sword. Thank you, Sally. You have the grace of courtesy. You should read the inscription on the shrine to complete your pilgrimage. There we go. <laughs> I love it. I love Krasit the Dramora, who has like the tone of voice of a, of a retail worker after a long week. The grace of courtesy. Thank you for your courtesy, Lord Vivek. I shall speak neither hurtful nor harsh word, but shall speak respectfully, even of my enemies. For temperate words may turn aside anger. Solid advice, really. And the, yeah, the longsword goes in the chest. What did we get from that? Swift swimmer. And water breathing. Sweet. Except for the one who wants to do something with your corpse. Oh yes, we'll get to him. <laughs> we'll get to him later. I don't suppose, like, these normally don't lead anywhere, but you never know with rebirth. I kind of feel like I want to check just in case there's a cheeky little secret. Okay. Well, Sally is cold and very tired and miserable and actually needs a drink. And some food. Do we have any food left over at this point? I'm gonna eat charcoal. <laughs> nah, it's all uncooked, isn't it? Okay, so she's absolutely knackered and hungry and miserable. But the pilgrimage is probably supposed to make you all of those things, so. Can I glitch my way out of this without having to use the console? Ugh! No is the answer. Alright, fuck it, we're climbing out. I could just swim all the way around if I was really, if I really wanted to, but it's just going to waste time. Yeah, that Daedra, he's like a retail worker who's already handed in his notice and no longer gives a fuck. Uh, right. We need to go find somewhere to rest. <sighs> ah, excuse me. Let's go upstairs and use the teleporters. noticed since I installed um, HUD expansion or UI expansion or whatever it's called that my uh, my other skills have disappeared so my survival and, and, and whatnot seem to have disappeared odd consequence of installing the mod kind of annoying but never mind this is a modern mind yep why
Okay, we just have a naked Khajiit wandering about. Just another day in Vivek. Odera? I don't know. What do you think of the Fallout TV series? I haven't watched it. And I don't really have any plans to either. Jazeera's drunk again. <laughs> is Jazeera going to make a cameo in every Morrowind playthrough now? Is that how this is going to work? Welcome to the Black Shark Adventurer. We're one of the most best corner clubs you'll find in the whole of Ardenfell, and perhaps the best you'll find in Vivek. Okay. Uh, I'd like a hot meal. A chunky stew. A water refill. Nah, actually, we're good. And I'd like a bed. 10 gold. Yes. I've seen very mixed reviews, honestly, of it. I, some people love it, some people hate it. Some people are very meh about it. I just, I'm not just not interested, can't be asked. Right. We are rested. Let's go upstairs and get some breakfast. Oh, yep, 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 fucking Mor Morrowind door fuckery. <sighs> Do you have any food I can have for the road? Yes, let's take some bread. And... You got anything cheaper than Skull? Not really. Drop the bottom down just a smidge. Oh man. Come on. Come on, it's two fucking septims, man. Jesus. Ugh. I, I, I just find it very hard to give a damn about Bethesda Fallout. I'm going I'm to be honest with you. Ever since Fallout, Fallout... Fallout 76 truly poisoned the well for me with uh, when it comes to Bethesda's version of Fallout. In, in my in my mind it has transformed fallout from being this cool um rpg franchise which had this biting satirical edge to it to being a corporate cash cow that i'm now unable to ever associate with anything but all of the bullshit that came with that game just the the uh, the uh, naked greed that that bethesda displayed with that game It's very hard to get over. It's kind of ruined the franchise for me. Uh, Alright. Let's see then. What's our next pilgrimage? I know I should probably get over myself and just watch the stupid show, but... I just can't. I just don't want to yet. I got other shit to watch anyway. I still haven't. I still haven't started House of the Dragon yet. For goodness, for goodness sake, that's that's been out ages now. I got. I got to catch up on that. I got to. Uh, I got to check out Foundation and Silo over on Apple TV. There's loads of other stuff I'd rather be watching. Right. Uh, okay. Puzzle Canal, done and dusted. In the bag. 
The Mask of Vivek, Shrine of Justice. Near the altar is Vivek's Ash Mask. In the days of fire, when Dagoth uh, first crept back into Red Mountain and awakened it, Vivek re led refugees here as they fled the ashen blight. Weary, they rested here a while. When Vivek awoke, he found himself and all his followers encased in casts of grey ash. Frozen like a sleeping statue and unable to free himself or help his people, Vivek was filled with despair. Vivek's tears weakened his ash cast. He tore the ash from his perished followers, breathed life into their lungs, and cured them of the blight. This is Vivek's heroism. His tender heart provides strength when his might fails. The Shrine of Justice is guarded within the Nisus Temple, in the village of Nisus, northwest by road from the town of Old Rune. When you address the shrine, it is customary to leave a potion of cure common disease as a token of your respect for justice. Suitable potions may be purchased from the temple. Homemade potions are not acceptable. All right, that's next on our list. We're off to Nisus. Just as soon as I get out of here. Uh, we need to actually get to the plaza, don't we? So we can go back to Old Rune via the um, teleporter, the Mage's Guild. Because we've got, still got to hand over the book to Edwina. What is with the ramp on this section? I'm floating slightly. And I'm moving sideways diagonally without even trying. Something strange is going on there. Camp's haunted. I think I'd just as well never see another Vault Dweller protagonist again. <laughs> I'm kind, yeah, I'm kind of done with Fallout. Like on the whole, actually, I'm with you, mate. I'll take you. I'll go one further than that. I'll say I'm I'm quite happy to Fallout to just die now. Like hey, goodbye. I'm getting that way with a lot of my favourite franchises, to be honest with you. I've kind of reached that point with Star Trek as well. I just... Can we please just kill it and put out, it out of its misery? We had a good run, but enough's enough. Let it die and come up with something new. Please. What do you want? Oh, Still hello. Done. Hang on a minute. What Supply chest! Restore Magicka! Thank you! Not you. How can I you. help you? Fuck. I've got no money! Well, isn't that awkward? I guess we're walking to Aldrune. Shit. I'm not quite as sick of, of, of Star Wars just yet as you guys are, I must admit. I'm not quite there yet. I'm sure I'll get there eventually, but Andor was superb. I want season two of it, and I didn't dislike Ahsoka either. I thought that was okay. What happened to Mandalorian? Yeah, that really one really fell off a cliff, didn't it? <laughs> season one was absolutely superb. Season two was okay. Season three was just... Yeah, I wasn't impressed with that. Ray Stevenson was the best part of Ahsoka. He absolutely was. And unfortunately, he's no longer with us. So that's a bit of a shame. Hopefully they just recast the character. instead of writing them out of the story. Do you remember back in the day? Back in my day. Back in my day. They used to recast characters all the time and nobody gave a shit. You get halfway through a TV show and just randomly one of the characters is being played by a different actor. And it was weird for like maybe a few episodes, but eventually you got used to it and you just carried on. Not 
Shwam to Mando. I, apparently there were some big creative differences behind the scenes. That's what I've heard. think Vanderfell would be a good setting for a TV show movie. It's Vanderfell, like the bizarro um, mirror universe Vardenfell, which is where everyone speaks Dutch. Yes, that's a brilliant example, classic. Yeah, in in Fresh Prince of Bel Air, they recast Aunt Viv, didn't they? Nobody gave a shit. I certainly never gave a shit when I used to watch it when I was a teenager. Apparently, I've been here before. <laughs> oh, hello! It's Nelos again, or is it Nelos, or is it some, the other guy? Nels Lendo, that was it, right? Yeah, hello again, Nels. Just passing through again. What kind of build are you running right now? Hand to hand, unarmored, and every magic skill. a well that actually works. Hell like, yeah it is. There's a mud crab. Let me punch it. Get more practice in. We really need to level up hand to hand because if it's going to be any use whatsoever we need to get our hand to hand to a high level pretty, pretty quick. Because at the minute, any time we encounter anything tougher than a mud crab or a rat, we're basically screwed. Come this on. happened last time. All day, you know. Can you stop skill stealing? It's really annoying. Do you know what? Why don't we stop and do a bit of fishing? So, we have a fishing rod, which I shall equip thusly. We also bought this bug shell spinner, which we shall attach to the fishing pole. Now we wait. I should eventually see ripples across the surface going towards it, and then I have to click at just the right time to catch the fishy, which then starts the fishing minigamey thing, and it's all rather marvellous. It's a bit like the Red Dead Redemption 2 minigame for fishing. There we go. You just got to get the fish's fatigue to zero and then you can reel it in. But it mustn't go into the red. I do love me a fishing mini game. I spent. You, you do not want to know how many hours I spent fishing in Red Dead Redemption 2. It's ridiculous. Gotcha! You caught a largemouth bass! Largemouth bass is a medium-sized carnivorous fish known for its widespread presence in Morrowind. Anglers are drawn to its impressive fighting spirit when hooked, but it is their succulent flesh that truly makes them a prized catch. Harvestable. Now if we click here... Bass meat. We wish we can actually use as bait. Same with crab meat. To catch different kinds of fish. Since you use different lures and things and bait to catch different types of fish, like large, small bait fish. Um, I have when I was playing around with this yesterday just to figure out how it worked. I, ca I caught a slaughter fish and it was amazing. Like the mini game was so friggin' hard. It had tons and tons of fatigue. Um, <laughs> but I caught myself a goddamn slaughter fish.
Anyway, lovely. We could cook that if we want to later for dinner. Do you know what? Thomas, that's a good question. I don't know. This, work, this honestly works much better than the, the official... Oops. The official fishing uh, plug-in for, for Skyrim. And a modder, I think, made it in like a weekend. According to that, when I caught the, if you're, if you're curious actually, since you mention it, when I caught the slaughter fish, the, the blurb text basically told me that they taste d d just absolutely dreadful, but they're valuable for their scales. People pro probably wouldn't eat slaughter fish in real life, I feel like, because here in the UK, up in the north, particularly in coastal towns, um, people don't eat cod. They have haddock instead at, at, at chip shops and the reason for that is because there's a popularly held belief that cod feed on the corpses of drowned sailors so up north where they're proper superstitious like you don't you don't get cod in fish and chip shops people eat haddock instead and the fish really aren't biting right now are they there's also different lures you can get which work better at night versus day as well, so time of day plays a part in this. There we go. I don't think this is a very big one. It's not got a lot of fatigue. You caught a sculpin. The sculpin is a small fish that inhabits both freshwater and saltwater environments. With its unassuming size, the sculpin serves as excellent bait for targeting larger prey. Anglers appreciate its versatility and ability to attract a variety of game fish. Okay, well, let's give that a try then, shall we? I'm probably going to catch a slaughter fish with this, or at least hook one. Uh, so if we... Replace Bugshot Spinner with the sculpin. I really want fish and chips now, by the way. <laughs> Just as an aside, should not have started talking about fish and chips while I'm on a diet. Stupid, stupid mistake. Oh, God damn it! really? The timing on it seems to be really, really finicky sometimes. Do, do, do. I think she move around while this is in the water. Maybe if I just ordered some cod with no chips. It'd be a bit of a psychotic thing to do, but maybe I can be forgiven because I'm on the diet. Oh, for God's sake. Try it again. I swear the bigger fish are more difficult to hook. The timing is, is way more finicky for them. Fish and veg. Where you can get, traditionally you get mushy peas from a chip shop. But I don't really care for mushy peas very much. But then again, maybe with this diet I should, I should, maybe this is my opportunity to finally, uh, Appreciate the underrated delicacy that is mushy peas. <laughs> My granddad used to fucking love them. I always thought they looked disgusting.
thing is, though, the chips are really nice, too. There's one specific chippy that I order from normally around here, who is, which is, in my, in my estimation, better than all the others, because I've tried every single chippy in this town. And there's one that's better than all of the others, and their chips are just so good. You do not even need to put salt, vinegar, anything on them. They're that good. No salt, pepper, anything fucking required. They're that delicious, the chips. So not ordering, no, not ordering the chips from there might actually physically pain me, I think. This has got to be a slaughterfish. Come on. Yeah, we caught a slaughterfish, ladies and gentlemen. The large slaughterfish is a formidable aquatic predator found across the expansive realm of Tamriel. Armed with sharp teeth and a dorsal fin that spans its entire body, this aggressive fish strikes fear into the hearts of those who enter its territory. Although its meat may be unappetizing, its scales are considered a delicacy. Slaughterfish has been added to your inventory. I guess we'll take it scales. One time slaughterfish meat, two time scales. Can use as a shiny lure. Interesting. Are they worth much? No, not really. There's the slaughterfish meat, which I can use as bait as well. All right, cool. I think that's enough fishing for one day. They might be offended you don't order the chips. I mean, yeah. <laughs> don't order out there. Stick to your diet. You'll feel better about yourself for not compromising. Well, the thing is... The thing is, technically, uh, my, my diet is a very simple one. It's a basic, it's a basic calories in, calories out thing. And the minute I have to be extra careful because on account of my ankle injury, I'm not getting as much physical exercise as I was. But as long as technically I'm not eating more than like 1,800 or 2,000 calories a day, I'm still on track. So, and the funny, the kind of, ironically, actually, the thing about, like, Deliveroo and Just Eat and that is that on the menus, it actually tells you exactly how many calories are in the thing you're ordering. So it's actually easier <laughs> to figure out how many calories are in what you're doing. Whereas when I'm cooking for myself, I just kind of have to guesstimate everything. This one is dead. I've been here before. <laughs> I mean, it's so f so far so good. It's so far it's working. I've been losing weight consistently for the last month. So I, I think I'm more or less getting it right. But it's annoyingly inexact science. You can you can lose weight eating just about anything. That's the thing. That's 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 what's weird about it. You know, there there are literally people who have lost weight eating McDonald's. 
it's just it's literally okay all, all that matters is calories in calories out at the end of the day although ideally obviously you want to be getting the correct you know nutrients and shit vitamins etc <laughs> Mess that rat up. Pretending you're in New York and he just took your last pizza slice. <laughs> yeah. This is a mage, eh? Yep. Mage who knows how to throw a knuckle sandwich. I do have um, Elemental Burst Week for if we get in serious trouble, but I don't like wasting my Magicka. This isn't Oblivion or Skyrim where your Magicka just passively recovers. I have to actually rest in order to get my Magicka back or use a potion. And potions are a precious... Magicka potions in Morrowind, if you're not familiar with the game, are a really fucking rare and precious commodity because you cannot make them very easily with alchemy. The uh, Restore... That was weirdly quick. Um, the Restore Magicka ingredients, alchemy ingredients in this game are actually very rare. It's kind of like Bethesda knew they'd made a broken magic system in this game and they tried to balance it out by just making Magicka potions really difficult to come by. What I do have actually is Exhausting Touch Week. Oh wait, no, that's not the one I was thinking of. It was Flea Bite. That's the one I want. It damages instead of fatigue instead of draining it. Which is really helpful if you're using unarmed because what it does is when you when you punch dudes with unarmed in this game, it damages their fatigue instead of their health until they collapse onto the floor like this and then when you punch them when they're down then you do health damage and the thing about hand to hand is that at high levels in this game hand to hand is stupid strong A campfire. Well, well, well. You know what? I'm going to just sit here, Mr. Guard, and take advantage of your campfire, if you don't mind, to uh, cook my dinner with. I got anything else worth cooking on here? Probably. Mushroom raw. Have some luminous rustula for dinner. Cool. Well, technically, you can eat as well as a vegetable, but it's uh, it's also very useful for um, alchemy. In vanilla, it's restore health. It's one of its effects. I don't know if that's still true in rebirth, though. Actually. leave one raw crab meat in my inventory to use as bait if I want to. Oh, we got all this kagooty meat as well, my god. Forgot about this. From the mating kagooties we killed as that part of that little side quest. Nice. 
All right, now we just let it cook. What type of build would you recommend for a first run? Ooh, long blade. Something, something with you want long blade, probably medium armor. Um, you definitely want some magic skills. It's hard to go wrong in Morrowind because no matter how bad your build is, you'll eventually become an overpowered god anyway. But um, yeah, just some sort of generic kind of like spell sword, magey kind of character that can do close combat and magic would be best. It kind of sucks to be honest, you're stuck at Orcish. Well, no, you got Adamantium as well. Adamantium, and if you can get your hands on some Indoril, that's pretty darn sweet as well. Just remember not to speak to the Ordinators while you're wearing it. <laughs> The night, uh, what I like about medium armor is it's a nice compromise between protection and sheer weight. Because heavy armor is nice and all, but it does take up fuck loads of your carry capacity to wear. Especially if you get into the really high tier stuff like ebony. Slaughterfish meat clearly cooks faster than everything else does. Oh, mushroom's nearly done. Lovely. Royal, Royal Guard armor from Tribunal's medium. Yeah, I think so. Okay, we burnt some of that, which is a bit of a shame. Did I burn the, uh, the slaughterfish meat? I did! Which means it tastes even worse than normal. Light armor I don't recommend because for a very, very large portion of the game you're stuck with bloody uh, chitin, which is which is just trash. At least with medium you get that bone mold, you get dragon scale. Light armor basically in vanilla you go netch leather. You go, you go like no, fur, netch leather, boiled leather, which are both the same in terms of stats, pretty much. Chitin. And then that's basically it until you get, not including the wolf armor you can get on soul time, I suppose. That is basically it until you get to um, glass, which is like end game armor. Medium is a better distribution of like available armors because. We've got all the ones I already mentioned, but also, actually, uh, if you include the expansions as well, you've got bear armor, is medium armor in, in soul time. Um, so is Star it's Star Rim, I think, is medium. I might be wrong, though. Star Rim could be heavy. I don't. I know the, the, the Nordic... There's Nordic heavy armor that the Star Warriors wear in soul time, but I feel like Star Rim is medium. So you do get a lot of... And obviously you've got Adamantium as well in Tribunal. So, I feel like there are a, a fair chunk of medium armor choices in the game. And of course you've got Indoril. An 
And Inderil is just it kick, just kicks ass. Inderil's fantastic armor. I love that love that stuff. Not only does it look good, but it has good stats. The only downside, obviously, is that if you talk to an order eight while wearing it, they'll attack you. But it's funny because like you can often get Inderil armor as quest rewards from from the ordinators themselves, so. Oh yeah, I suppose you've got the Dark Brotherhood armor. Haven't you from Tribunal? In the light armor category. Although the problem with Dark Brotherhood armor is that it just looks stupid. <laughs> I've never liked the look of it. Particularly the boots. Artifact medium armor. Man. There's not a ton of. I mean, maybe the dragon bone curious. Is that is that medium or is that heavy? Also, the lord's mail. I think my uh, the lord's mail might be heavy actually, but the ebony mail I think is medium. probably get the ebony mail actually in this playthrough. In fact, we definitely will. Oh, that's pretty. If we had an easel, we could sit up and do a painting right here. Haven't haven't got the money to afford that right now. I don't even have money for the bus <laughs> at this point, let alone an easel. Sleep for the night, shouldn't we? Really? Another crab. <laughs> Wish they bring back the Daedric Crescent. It's so. It's probably difficult to animate for the Daedric Crescent these days. Was a cool bit of kit though. It's such a weird weapon though, you know. Like it almost requires unique animations. Oh, level up, sweet. And we're nearly dead, but oh dear, it's not actually. Hold on. Uh, woohoo! Do I have any restore health? Yes, I do. You cheeky bloody crab! You nearly killed me. I don't hear no bell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the other downside of heavy armor, isn't it? Really, it slows you down so much in a game that already has painfully slow running speed. Any other Daedric artifacts you'd like to see return? I don't think it's a Daedric artifact, but I'd like to see the Bitter Cup make a return. That'd be cool. Uh, and what's it called? A magical Warhammer. Uh, it's not Cloud Cleaver, that's the name of the axe for the Naked Nord. Uh, just a bit of covers in Skyrim Anniversary Edition. <laughs> Pfft. 
But no, not Valendrung. No, um... I can never remember the name of it. It's the really big two-handed Warhammer that you're actually able to wield in one hand because it has a constant effect feather enchantment that is exactly its own weight. So it's completely weight- Skull Crusher! Thank you, Skink. Well done. Yes. Skull Crusher. It is a giant, what should be a two-handed Warhammer, but you can wield it in one hand because it weighs absolutely nothing. That's That one's quite funny. will do. Oh wait, no, you just you just pop the uh, firewood down on the ground, don't you? Grand. We should go re replenish our wood supply though. I mean, it has mass, right? But when you're holding it, the mass is cancelled out by the feather enchantment on you specifically. To anyone else, it's still a big, stonking great heavy hammer. Because it's not literally weightless, as it has no mass. It does. It has like it weighs like fifty or something insane like that. But it has a feather enchantment on it which counterbalances that fifty. So to you it feels weightless, but to the guy who you're smacking over the head with, it probably feels like a fifty arbitrary weight unit hammer. Oh, there goes my axe. Holy shit, I have nineteen firewood now? That's a bit more than I thought I needed. There we go, that'll burn through the night. I think it rained during the night, didn't it? Alright, speed! Personality? A bit more willpower would be good. More agility. Add a smidge more firewood. Place utensil, wood grill, but anything else that needs cooking. I got more crab meat. Well, it's a foggy day, apparently. in the bitter coast. Probably humid as heck right now. Vanilla Morrowind vibes, yes. They've got the, 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 the draw distance has now been reduced to vanilla levels. <laughs> You've never played Morrowind before? What mods are you using? Dude, too many to count. Too many to count.
And done. I think we burned most of it again. Alright. Let's be on our way. As we continue our journey north. Towards Aldrun. On foot, because we have no money. <laughs> no money for fast travel. Oh no, this guy. Right, I can just walk past this guy and not have this entire encounter, but that wouldn't really be in the spirit of things. Greetings! You should take care while in these parts. There are murderous outlaws about. No telling what might happen to an unwary traveler. Oh yes, these are dangerous times. I'll rob you blind and cut your throat without giving it a second thought. It's a bad idea to carry anything of value on your person. In fact, it's probably best if you give me that gold of yours. 100 septums, perhaps? I think you'll find the way less dangerous if you do. So the funny thing is, I don't have 100 septums. So I guess he just took like the 10 or so I had. And that's that. However, this dastardly bandit cannot... We cannot afford to let this stand. must be dealt with. You will die where you stand. <laughs> It'll be your blood here, not mine. Can we get him just with hand-to-hand, -hand probably? Oh, maybe, actually. He's already out of stamina. Are we got him in a kind of stun-lock loop now. This is why hand-to-hand -hand is OP, ladies and gentlemen. So funny now, eh, Fjol? Just gonna do a quick restore health. I could restore a healing, cast a healing potion, but I need to keep this guy stuck in his little loop. The mental image of what's happening right now is brilliant. Just Sally going all John Wick on this guy's ass. <laughs> and hand and skill, skill increased again. Nice. to victory I can taste it there we go rest in piss fuel I will take that 175 gold walk to Balmora and use it to get a trip with the assault strider to old rune how much is this stuff worth I would take your armor as well while I'm at it and your axe these gloves. Right, yeah. <laughs> Don't fuck with Sally the temple monk. Because she will fuck you up. I'm amazed, actually. I didn't think we'd be able to do that with just hand-to-hand, -hand, but we did. 
I think it's my hand to hand. He's 54 now. It's no nothing to snort at, is it? Sally was kind of a boss bitch when she was the Divine Crusader in Oblivion as well, though, to be fair, so we should have expected as much. Oh, God. Well, this is just horrific. I'm being poisoned. Uh, let's switch to uh, some magic for this. Or just die, that works too. Oh, come on. At least we can run away from this thing pretty easily. This is why it's handy to have destruction magic in reserve. A voriplasm, eh? I don't seem to be able to loot it or do anything with it. Ugh. Well, that was a surprise. say I wasn't expecting that but I'm delightfully surprised by it from rebirth but first showed up in ESO in the black marsh DLC stuff interesting so that's where they're from interesting it's surprising how many creatures are canonically in the Elder Scrolls that people don't know about a bit like the kobolds in Tamriel rebuilt I bet that surprised a few people when they first encountered them like kobolds in Elder Scrolls? That doesn't seem right to me. Except it turns out kobolds have been in the Elder Scrolls for a very long time. Except Elder Scrolls kobolds are weird and disgusting and kind of creepy. They're not like D&D kobolds. <laughs> or uh, Dwarf Fortress kobolds for that matter. Centaurs in Daggerfall, yeah, and the mummies. I hope mummies make a return, honestly. Like, if, they, if the next game's going to be set in Hammerfell, and it might be, I hope mummies make a return. I want to do some, like, exploring some totally not ancient Egyptian ruins with mummies and stuff in them. They're not silly little guys, no. They're big, creepy-looking, horrible monster things. Although there's a delightful little quest where uh, you have to try and get one to leave a farm and you you can use an orcish interpreter to speak to it and get it to leave peacefully. Because kobolds speak... I can't remember if kobolds speak orcish or if the orcs speak kobold. Alright, you big dumb bastard. Come and get me. Load, drag, wear sharks. Tamar, but reintroduce the Velk. Oh, yeah, Velk, they're fun. I like the Velk. They're weird as heck, but they're cool. See, you've gotten a bit confused there, Mr. Cliff Racer. That honestly only makes my life more difficult. Thank you. Look at my hand-to-hand -hand skill increase. Heck yeah. Let's get Sally starting to get scarily good at this. Yeah. 
we got a lot of racer meat off that thing. Holy balls. Uh, where is it, though? There it is. Five racer meat from that thing. I bet they. I bet cliff racers taste delicious. I bet it's like, it tastes a bit like goose. It feels like somehow it would be appropriate if it tasted like goose. Do you know what? Why don't we stop and grab something to eat before we continue onwards? We are well fed, but we can get a buff from from from, from a hot meal. So, let's see. What do we fancy? Let's go with the tasty soup for agility. I think. And I'm gonna. Do a little bit of restore health. Oh no, there's another one. It's somebody else's problem for now. Or probably more accurately, my problem later. Right, have I got anything that needs selling as we pass by Revere? I don't think so, no. Has this respawned? It has! This was not fully empty. I believe I left a couple of scrolls and things in here. Which means that in Rebirth, the supply chests do respawn even if they are not completely empty. Oh, the Nord's kit. Yeah, you're right. Actually, we do need to get rid of that. What's more, it looks like these, uh, these chests respawn pretty darn quick too. Really need to get a soul trap spell, because then we, then we can start messing around with enchant. Let's go speak to Meldor. The classic. The absolute classic noob early game Morrowind um, merchant in the game. Why is there endurance solo? Oh, we're hot. Interesting. I'll take my robe off then. It's a warm day out there, apparently. What am I looking for? Charming touch, that was it. Up, will you? I will, man. I just need to wait for my fatigue to restore. Catch my breath again so I can try and charm you and get better prices. I quite like our um, outfit when we're not wearing the robe, actually. It's a bit more posh. What do you think of Valmora, Outlander? But, yeah, I dig it. <laughs> this is awkwardly humming while we wait. Oh, come on. Well, there goes my magic. Ugh. I suppose I did just restock on potions. It worked. It not, didn't work very well, but it worked a little bit at least. Come on, Meldor. There we go. The guy on our side will buy the axe office, I think. Sorry, stranger. My time is short, so get on with it. Sweet. We now have bum 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 four hundred and thirty-six gold. I'm not sure we've been this rich in the entire game so far. Goodness me. We're rich. We're rich. I can probably afford the fast travel and maybe also a spell. Or maybe I should buy some alchemy equipment. I'm not sure. Anybody here got soul trap? I feel like the lady in the corner who is totally not a necromancer might have soul trap. 
Uh, she doesn't. Nah. Maybe Galbadir. Oh, yeah, you don't do spells, do you? Interesting. I'll oh, we'll try some of the guys in Eldrune then. May I help you? Three blessings, Sarah. To what do I owe this pleasure? I've got your book. Thank you, Sally. I'll return the book to you soon, but in the meantime, I have more duties for you. I've been distracted from my studies by several reports from Margan. Apparently there is some sort of disturbance at Hulin's hut. Since Hulin is a member of the guild, we really ought to do something about the disturbance. I simply haven't the t had the time to do it myself. My research is in an absolutely critical phase. Would you go to Margan and take a look for me? Yes, we're headed that way anyway. Excellent, Sally. Go to Margan. I'm sure someone there can give you further directions. Take care of this for me so I can continue my studies in peace. All right. Hey, you're not a dude, are you? You're not you either. I'm listening. Go ahead. What do you want? You're the enchanted. Does anybody here around around here sell spells? I think there's a couple of guys upstairs that do. Spells. Invisibility strong. That'll certainly be handy, but I doubt we can cast it. Man, you don't have it either. Fireball, great. A ranged destruction spell would be very nice. Because we don't have one currently. Light would also be handy. Also, it'd be nice to get a conjuration skill uh, spell finally. Oh, as usual, there's too many things, and I don't have money for them all. Let's get this fireball. Get that. And light. Is restocked. It has. Okay, these these restock really fast. Like wow. Nobody's got soul trap though. I wonder if it's one of those spells that's awkwardly rare to find. Now then, we have 232 gold left. Are we walking to Margan or are we taking the bus? I want to see how much it's going to cost me. 26 GP. What's the time? 12 p.m. Let's walk to Margan. Temple spell merchants for Soul Trap. Actually, that's a good idea. Let's go to the temple. It's a really good idea. I sometimes forget that the temple sells spells. Oh, we shouldn't have, we should not have the flint knife equipped. Just noticed it there on her belt. It's 
Soul's Valen. What are you equipped with, dude? Some staff. Some description. Right, you do training. And this is rebirth, so the training's probably going to be... Oh, he doesn't, won't even offer it to my rank. The training's probably going to be extortionately expensive. Oh, it's, it's Aenus. Hello. Hello, Sally. Welcome to the Aldrin Temple. I've decided to study for the priesthood, thanks to you. I decided to give my parents' house to the temple. While I'm studying to be a priest, I'll be serving here as a teacher or doing anything else Almsevia requires. I'm sure my parents would be proud, and I feel so much better now that I'm free of the guilt and shame of my former follies. He's got quite a lot of unique dialogue, this guy. Well, good for you, Aeneas. Aeneas, or whatever your damn name is. Here we go. Alright, he does sell Amsevi Intervention, which is probably worth the dosh by itself. Uh, I don't see Soul Trap anywhere. But Amsevi Intervention is a heck yeah. That's going to make life much easier. Just out of curiosity, though, I want to see if any of you guys have Soul Trap. No, you don't. Nobody wants to give me training. Just a crappy layman. I haven't even finished the pilgrimage of the seven graces yet. I'm nobody to these people. Well, now we're definitely walking to Margan. However, I think I'm gonna, we're gonna stay here for the rest of the day and the night to get my magicka back for free. We'll have some kaguti meat and some crab meat. And we'll go get a drink from the well. See, chat collectively has been reduced to a single brain cell. It's probably... Oh, yes, it is actually time I ended the stream anyway. <laughs> uh, let's fill up our bottles. On the road, there we go. Like a poor pilgrim would sell her fancy clothes and wear something cheaper, like just a robe. I mean, but they're her clothes, though, you know? She started the game with them, and also they do help keep us warm. We've got the common robe. Which actually we should, probably should be wearing, because apparently it's a bit chilly this morning, judging by the temperature gauge. But, uh. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave you here next week. We are going to be uh, making our way to Margan on foot. And then from Margan, 
well, we need to do Hulin's hut quest, the, the Hulin's hut quest in Margan. But once we do that, onwards from Margan up to Nisus to do the uh, the next temple shrine pilgrimage quest thing. There's also the the, ne the next pilgrimage after that is also near Nisus anyway, so we'll be in the right neighbourhood for that. Uh, that's arguably the first difficult one though. So we'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, next week, uh, next Saturday, assuming I don't have something else planned in the meantime. I'm still kind of on the fence about Mana Lords, because I feel like I should stream it or make a video of it, but um, I don't know, I keep playing it. I've played three hours of Mana Lords so far, and I've still not quite figured, I haven't, still haven't really figured the game out. So I, just, I, was, I was thinking about streaming this weekend, but it didn't really happen. Uh, so it's probably just going to be more Morrowind again next weekend because I'm really enjoying this I actually really am I mean it was fun doing a bunch of random games for a while after we finished KOTOR but it's nice to be back to a series and it's nice to be back to this game in particular so yeah folks I'll see you then have a good one um, and yeah that's it bugger off toodaloo he says, trying to find the end stop button. There it is.